Greetings, I'm Wayne Quackenbush and welcome to Art Matters. Uh, today we have a new and unique show. Uh, this is our 13th episode, so we've been doing this for a year, once a month, and this for the first time I'm going to attempt to interview two artists together. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is that not only is this a show about their artwork, but it's a show about them as a couple, and it's a love story, and it's very unique, and I'm very excited about it. Mm -hmm. Now we have Tristan Zetmar uh, to my immediate left. Uh, she's a fabric artist, painter, um, holistic healer, practitioner, and Tvertko Sarek, who is um, a man after my own heart, inspired very much like by comic books and fantasy illustration. And um, Cheston is from Sweden and Tvertko is from Croatia and they met in beautiful downtown Newport, Rhode Island. Now, one of you can talk about how you met. You want to start? You can start, you have a prettier <laughs> voice. <laughs> <laughs> well, we met first in a store uh, where we actually saw each we other. saw each other. Yeah, mm -hmm. and our eyes met, and I remember that Turco actually was checking me out to the point where I blushed, and I don't really blush mm -hmm. that much anymore, but I was blushing then. So I guess that stayed with me, and then... And this uh, is about 15 years ago. Yeah. yeah, and then about a year, year and a half after that, um, we saw each other again in the bank parking lot of Bank Newport. Um, and I went back into my car and I sat there and suddenly it was a soft knock on the window. Yeah, uh, I, I just couldn't uh, let the opportunity go because last time I saw her was, as she says, a year, about a year and a half ago. And I couldn't really, I wasn't willing to wait for another year before I <laughs> ran into her by chance. And so I said to my, dude, you got to do something, you got to do something right now. <laughs> and pretty un originally, <laughs> but yeah, I knocked on the window and I don't I know you from somewhere? I think I mm -hmm. saw you around. I mean, maybe I could have your phone number so we don't have to rely on a chance encounter if yeah, we want yeah. something like that. Right. I don't even, yeah. and half of my mind was like, what are you saying? Shut up, shut up, <laughs> shut up right now. <laughs> because <laughs> you were being so bold. I, yeah, that's not and usually. Out of it's not you know, no. right. But like yeah. I said, Better to try than to wait for another year or so. Eh? Right. And um, yeah. we introduced e each other, uh, and yeah, as soon as uh, I said your name correctly, right, Sheshtin, uh, she knew that I'm not from around here. That's and right. And she correctly pronounced my name, uh, Tvrtko, I knew right, because you don't really meet that many Americans that can pronounce my exactly. name correctly yes. right took, away on a first try. It took me a while try. to figure that out myself. Right. Yeah, so. Now yeah. we're going to concentrate on uh, your story right mm -hmm. now. So we're going to start with um, how you originally came to America. Uh, so I know you said you, you kind of landed in Oklahoma. Yes, that was my first stop. In it, Oklahoma. I even had a Swedish Oklahoma accent for a while. Howdy, how you all doing? <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, I was there for a year and a half as an exchange student. And then I started traveling the land to see if the rest of the states was like Oklahoma and had culture shock after culture shock and ended up in Newport, Rhode Island. So. And uh, what brought you to Newport? I met a person in San Francisco who invited me to come mm -hmm. visit Newport. Okay, um, and so when you visited, did you, did you feel like it was a place you wanted to stay? I really like Newport. Uh, <coughs> I could feel right away, being from Europe, you know, you can feel there's some history here. Mm -hmm. um, just walking down the street, you can feel that people have been here for a while. Uh, energetically, you can sense that, and it didn't feel all new. Like in Oklahoma, people were so impressed, something like, 50 years old or something, you know, oh, and right, of course. in yeah. Sweden and Croatia, people, we have churches from 1100, yeah, and so this old. felt like a little more European, mm -hmm. a little more, um, yeah, a little more uh, like home in mm. some way. And uh, I've seen your work off and on for a number of years, but I've yet to, I've just experienced it for the first time. 
today, and most of what I'm seeing is uh, fabric art. Yeah, and, uh, I call them vibrations. Vibrations because it's a kind of embroidery, right? Correct. But more freehand. Yes, I don't follow a pattern. Right. Yeah, I don't even sketch out exactly what I'm going to do before. It kind of evolves as I go, just like a painting. So did you study painting? <coughs> I did study here and there. Um, I never got a full-fledged degree mm -hmm. from anywhere. I was too much of a restless gypsy in my younger days. And you uh, also kind of included uh, your beginnings of your holistic practices. You said you were a massage therapist? Yeah, that came later. I had like my first midlife crisis around 20 nine mm -hmm. and um, I think they call that a quarter life crisis. Oh I see okay <laughs> and then I decided that uh, I needed to do something besides art because I didn't just want to paint what people wanted me to paint mm -hmm. um, you know Newport Bridge over and over again or whatever um, so in order to have creative freedom I figured I needed to do something else so I could call the shots a little more right and then I looked into what would I do if money was not an issue. And I realized that I was already massaging all my friends, my family. Um, so that was something that came very naturally to me. And also people tended to trust me. Um, strangers would often confide in me, no matter what kind of work besides art that I had, uh, working in a store, working as a teacher, working as a waitress, people would tell me their life stories. So I, I I listened to all that and decided that maybe life wanted me to actually be available to people in, in that regard. Because they feel calm and open up in front of you. Yeah. And did you study massage therapy? or In Sweden, yeah. Oh, okay. I actually started studying in this country, in Newport, Rhode Island, mm -hmm. with a French woman in something called Swedish massage. And it just seemed strange for me as a Swedish person to be in America yes, studying with a French yes, person. So I went back to Sweden and got my training uh, there. Famous Swedish massage. Of course, there's no Swedish massage in Sweden. Okay. They've never heard of that, but that's All right. okay. Well, do you want to start showing some of your sure. work? Sure, yeah. Um, oh. We can show this one, maybe. That's one of my later ones. Is that good? Like uh. that? Yep, and so you've incorporated, uh, it looks like beadwork and, and there are shells. And, yeah. And where would you even start with on a project like this? I start like in the middle. Okay, and you work? I think I started at the horizon and then went with a wave and um, there wanted to be a figure in there. I don't know if you see the woman in the waves. Okay. Uh, well, see here, there's like a face, a oh, I got profile, you. a yep. shoulder. Yep. Oh, I, I often see, like to yep. hide, hide little, fig little hidden figures. That's been a little bit of my trademark. And it's also uh, kind of emphasizes the connection of, with, of the body to the world. You know, yeah. how there's no difference between... Correct. the landscape and the person in the landscape yes I, I call it I am the ocean so so yeah so that runs through the connection with nature is kind of something that runs through a lot of my work this one um, behind you I don't know which if I don't know if they can get that yeah separately. can you see that but yeah that one is the same thing mm -hmm. except for instead of water it's um, it's space, but uh, the same feeling of merging with nature, um, like the, the, sp the weightlessness of space. How oh, we're all just a vibration. Yeah, Everything we're all stardust in yes. reality, right? So and then you have another one behind. Yeah, this one is like more of a traditional landscape. Mm -hmm. It was inspired by um, something I saw in Middletown, and then I just went off from there and added a deer. and you know, things like that, but it was a peaceful morning and it stayed with me, so I... That one has that. a kind of a Van Gogh feel to it. Yes. The, the, the sky that is so alive and everything, everything and everything I'm seeing is, is so alive and moving and... and uh, yes, yeah. The, the um, fabric 
going in and out of the canvas. No, this is and an actual an, painting. This one is a painting, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's an oil painting. Um, but again, it's nature and man kind of coming together. Um, and I guess with my art, I often want to say we are nature. We need to take care of nature because we are nature. You know, we are not separate. We've made ourselves separate. But if, um, if, the, if nature suffers, so do we because... Well, we're coming off of centuries of uh, people trying to conquer nature. Right. I yeah. mean, and, and fighting against nature. And part of that was survival. Uh, yes. You had to do certain things in order to live, but it, it's become obviously damaging to the right. planet. So right. it, it, you're, you're certainly emphasizing that connection. Yeah. And uh, here's another one with like a little hidden um, profile in there. It's kind of like the presence in nature that you can feel sometimes. It's kind of hidden. And yet there. It's, it's almost anim animism, like there's a spirit in the world that mm. is all around us. Right, exactly. Some people have called it paganism or whatever, but I do believe I, that's my view, that everything is alive. You know, the trees, I can feel I'm pretty sensitive to energy, and so is Tortko, actually. But there must be an overall unity that connects everything. Correct. Yeah. Correct. That's, that's the whole... The colors are wonderful. Oh, idea. Thank you. And this one is one <laughs> of my later paintings. I don't know if that can be shown in its entirety, but it's... Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. And again, I don't know if you see the two profiles creating the, mm -hmm. the face of the mm -hmm. baby there, but um, my idea behind it kind of evolved as I was painting uh, about masculine and feminine merging and creating a new something, a new form of consciousness that um, is a little higher. There's a lot of symbolism going on in there, the yes. snakes and the stars and the right. lotus and I see an Ouroboros, the snake eating its own that's tail. That's right. And, and uh, that's a, that's Coming symbolic Coming into unity of, and wholeness. And, and, and almost uh, the cyclical nature of life and, and the spirit. Right. Um, yeah, so that's that one. And occasionally, oh, I did go to Iceland um, a few years ago. So this one was inspired by the Aurora Bora Borealis oh, yeah. there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Aurora Paloma. And, you, and you, uh, you, you're working in a very... Um, mixed palette from the, from the blues from the cools of the blues into the the little hot spots of the orange yeah. there and uh yeah left uh, i go through periods but it tends to often be blue greens and then i'm mm -hmm. i get like okay enough of that and then it moves into more of the orange peaches pinks and then i slide back into the blue green again so you know you well so i mean so your life is a is a process of learning and um, connecting with people. Yes. But you've also picked up all sorts of different practices along the way. I have, yeah. So you started with a massage. Started with a massage. And then I found that um, sometimes when you touch someone, you touch them in a deeper way. And people would maybe start crying when they relaxed because they had held something back. And I felt... I needed some more training to be able to hold space for people, so mm -hmm. I trained for four years in something called the Rosen Method. Mm -hmm. um, so that's um, the whole the whole gist of that is to hold space and to connect with the part of the body that's held something in or down or back for a long time, to allow that to come up to the surface when it's ready. Um, then after that, I've trained in. Um, Expressive art, which is another form of art therapy. Mm -hmm. um, I became a yoga teacher. I think I decided to become a yoga teacher to actually help me land in my own body more, too. Because um, when I do my artwork, I'm not very embodied. I go somewhere else. And uh, the body needs to be tended to also. So yoga helps me to... To bridge the gap. Yes. Yeah. And then from there, hypnosis, past life regressions, um, going into other dimensions. 
And, and it's a never-ending uh, process, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because you, you keep growing. And I, I feel very, very fortunate. All my passions, all my interests, I, in, I end up studying myself first, <coughs> and then I end up doing them with other people. Absolutely. So, yeah. And, and it, you're a big help to the community, as I know oh, well, so well. You. Now, we're going to take a little bit of a break, and we're going to come back and uh, talk to Virko's experience, which is completely different, and I just love how mm -hmm. the stories come together. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, we did a little of uh, scene shift, a little rearranging, and uh, now I'm going to concentrate on speaking to Tvertko, the other half of the artist couple we have today. And Tvertko, we were just talking briefly about what brought you to the United States. Uh, opportunity, more than anything else. Mm -hmm. and I was still in Croatia, in Zagreb, looking for work, and. Uh, there was an ad in the newspaper saying, we are looking for people willing to live and work in the United States. Oh, okay. Right. So it sounds like s some kind of a scam or something, you know, and Yeah, I like some kind of day labor type of a situation. Yeah. I called and it turned out that it was legit, you know, and uh, sure enough, you know, in the, within the next few days, they had me to go to the U.S. Embassy, get visa and everything, and in about uh, 10 days after I saw that then in the papers, I was here. Wow. Yeah, it was like that. I didn't even have time. I didn't even know really where I'm going. Eh? Oh, I didn't know about Newport or anything like that. So you know, how what did, kind how of place. did they, the powers that be, how did they select Newport for you to land? Because it's simply that the <coughs> people who wanted people to come and work in the United States, they had the 7-Eleven store. Eh? And they simply didn't ha couldn't find anybody who would be willing to work in oh, such a place. They still do for that then, month. because we yeah. get a lot of kids mostly from, from uh, Eastern Europe, uh, Bulgaria, mm. Russia, mm -hmm. uh, Ireland. Yeah. Uh, Ireland's not as prevalent, but I see a lot of Eastern European kids in the that? summers in Newport. Yeah, so you were part of that. I believe so. Yeah, I don't know. Were if you it's supposed the same to? People? I'm sorry, I'm talking no. over you. Uh, I, I don't know if it's the same people who did it back then, uh -huh. but I would imagine the system of it is probably the same. Eh? So, uh, yeah. Was it for the summer, though? It was uh, for a year. Eh? Okay. And uh, you had to, I, I had to take the obligation that I'm going to So you signed on like for a them, okay. yeah, for, for a year. Mm -hmm. eh? And after that, I could go and pursue whatever I want, you know. So, uh, but you had a temporary visa. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, I liked the area on the first day yeah. when I came here. I immediately got like a good vibe from the area and from the people, and uh, basically everything. As Shestin said, you know, it did feel like almost like Europe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And even though everybody told me, like, if you think that we here are laid back, you should go to California. You know, like <laughs> those guys, like, no, don't yeah, care about anything. I haven't been there yet. Mm -hmm. I imagine that at some point uh, we might go and see you it. Might you know, but be a little bored. You really? You think? <laughs> yeah. But that's Who knows? Right. We'll see. Yeah. Well, in any case, uh, Oga, I went and did that. You know, and then went back to Croatia. That was after we got married, you know, mm. and uh, had all the paperwork and then came back and have been here ever since. I came in uh, 2011, right. this time. Right? So you and became a citizen yeah. recently. Uh, mm. Actually, 2014 I got my citizenship, yeah, that's right? It, yeah. So it's been I five years. the ceremony you put yeah. right. on yeah. Facebook. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's been like five years now yeah. right, that uh, I've become a citizen of the United States, mm -hmm. uh, which feels very, very good. Right? Okay. You're still yeah. a Croatian citizen, I'm too, I'm still a Croatian though. citizen, mm -hmm. yeah. We're both dual. You're yeah. Swedish. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. cool to be dual. Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah. Two passports and everything. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't, doesn't hurt to no, have multiple citizenships. <laughs> yeah. And... Uh, what I guess what I like most about the area is uh, that I have encountered a lot of artistically inclined people. Plus, there's a pretty decent comic book store. That's true too. <laughs> yes, right. yes, that was a big, uh, big point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, but yeah, you know, so many people who are into art, various forms of art. You know, so you have uh, 
a lot of uh, interesting topics, you know, uh, a lot of I a lot of same interests, you know, with so many people, and pretty soon you really feel that it's like an artistic community around here with so many galleries and everything. And yeah, uh, we we are all interlocking, and everybody seems to know each other. I've stated this before, but one of my goals is to meet every artist in Rhode Island, yeah. and that's a possibility mm -hmm. in this state. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and and you get to. You get to see the wheels connecting between the different groups and the different artists and the different practices. Exactly. And, and it, it all comes together. Exactly. Now, you're self-taught. Yes. I we need to start showing some of your work. Okay. Uh, uh, you can talk about what interested you as a child that kind of led to you what you're doing now. Uh, I, uh, well, more than anything else so was, uh, something was you show. Uh, comic books, uh -huh. of course. and. Uh, Eventually, it led into this. I hope it shows. Uh, yeah, you can. Yeah, in. If, if yeah, that, yeah, I don't know if there is anything I, I can do. Uh, all right. Mm -hmm. So it led into stuff like this. These are, this is just uh, one That's of a the pen and ink and color pencil. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, like one of the illustrations that I did. I did this one inspired by the band. Eh? Uh, yes. Gandalf Murphy and the Slambovian Circus of Dreams. It's wow, a band we both <laughs> like a lot. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And uh, one of the others that uh, I would like to show quickly. Well, this is one. <laughs> this is uh, something that I had an uh, idea for, like a fake movie poster. Uh huh. You know, that's it just whatever came to mind. I have put on the on the paper. No, okay. over the years we've talked about one of your main influences being Heavy Metal Magazine, exactly. which was an American publication that reprinted European Metal Hurland. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, in fact, before it became a he came out in America, I was ordering the, the French version. French version, yeah. And I'm sure there must be different language versions of it, too. Uh, it was uh, originally the Metal Scream, right? Metal? Uh, metal Hurlant, something like that? I think that. Metal Hurlant. That translates yeah. to yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, so you were looking at artists like... Uh, like Jean Giraud, like uh, uh, Richard Corbin, uh, right. like Drillier. Yes. And, uh, and those guys. And you can see all of that in your work. The, the, yeah. the complete uh, uh, fantasy, uh, different time periods meshed together. Exactly. Uh, uh, Creatures, demonic and angelic and monstrous, exactly. uh, heroes, villains. Um, Reason you must why. Must go through a lot of color <laughs> pencils. <laughs> yeah, that's true, too. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, you know, uh, I don't see the other way. I guess it could be done with a computer and all that, but I just like the feel. I don't mind the time invested. You know, yes. I have the patience, you know, and then I can really play with colors, you know, and, and uh, well, there's, like, there's something meditative about the, the texture of the of uh, laying down color exactly. in uh, such a mannered way. And yeah. It takes patience and and uh, time and and you get into that altered states. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Aside from this, illustrations like this, mm -hmm. I also was fortunate enough to become a regular in this particular magazine. Which comes out of Connecticut, if I remember correctly. Connecticut, uh, I, it's uh, thanks to the good friend of ours, Wendy Logan, eh, who saw some of my artwork, and she's the editor of the magazine, and they were, they had an art page, but they were just thinking about turning that art page into like a comic book page. Mm -hmm. eh. So she saw some of my work. So do you have a strip in there now? Uh, or? Yeah. yeah. I actually okay, have. Uh, oh, okay. Got my a regular contributor. Right excellent, here. Excellent. It's it it comes out every two months mm -hmm. or so. Mm -hmm. So in every issue, there is a page of mine. Every time it's a new story, but it's like a standalone. You know, it's not a continuous uh, comic book. You know, it's not a series. But every of these pages is just a one self-contained story that can stand on its own. So music and all the magazine, sorts of yeah, stuff. the magazine itself is about music, gastronomy, uh, culture, places to go out, places to eat, concerts that are happening or in yeah, the area, yeah. uh, it's it's things like that. Yeah. Yes. So uh, they thought that uh, this type of artwork of mine would be a good fit, and yeah. that was 
also like four years ago, something, something like, like that, that yeah. right? And yeah. so for about four or five years, n about now, I've been regular with this magazine. That's right. I um, remember when you first yeah. showed really me when you first started. Them, right? No, not at all. Because uh, I also have other stories. Some of them have been published in your own Yes, indeed. Magazine. And in fact, mm -hmm. we're going we're to start volume two, hopefully, in the fall. Terrific. Yes. I have... Uh, I got some new material. Oh, good, yeah. and, I, and I do too as well. Uh, I got sure sidetracked I by mm. life uh, yeah. and being busy. Yeah. So you have more stuff over there? I have uh, all of this, of course. All right, is uh, some of them are <laughs> better than others because because I have them uh, from the very beginnings until now. Do you have a, a large backstory that you're drawing from or is everything kind of different because well, you see alien creatures <laughs> and lots of prosthetics and armor yeah, and weaponry yeah and a, l a lot of this stuff is are actually ideas that i intend to use later because eh? right now i have a plan to do like three larger stories by larger i mean over 44 pages at least like a full-fledged stories eh? well um, european uh Standard. Graphics uh, are different because yeah. they they get much more attention and people publish them uh, more as graphic novels rather than periodicals. Exactly. Periodicals, at least from my understanding, are, are a little rarer. Uh, the, the, the very weird American pamphlet format doesn't mm -hmm. really have the same feel over there. In no. fact, even American comics reprinted, and you've told me this before, they're much thicker and they're, they're, they have much more material than yeah. the 32 pages that we have here. Yeah, yeah, they do. Uh, okay. And uh, yeah, like the graphic novels uh, in Europe, they don't come out as often. Right, eh? the, the artist actually yeah. can, just like a writer in, uh, would, would take their time to make the product the way it was, they, they want it and not face the deadlines. Yes, yeah, uh, okay. they are not so strict. It's much more part of publishing rather than periodicals. Exactly. All right. So, basically, in these, I have uh, all those ideas that showed up. Yes. You know, and that then, uh, all right, this is my rendition of one scene from the Dune. Oh, okay. Desert planet. Yep, mm -hmm. yep. Oh, okay. I would very much like to, to do a comic book version of that. I'm hyped about the movie. Oh that's yeah. about to come, you mm -hmm. know, we'll see how that's going to play out. Well, we're getting close to the end here, so yeah. um, sure. we will take a minute and, and uh, kind of, I wanted to thank you both for appearing. I know thank you, you. have to take some time yeah, out of your you day to do us. this. And again, um, our one year anniversary, and it seems fitting that we have uh, a team a team here this is awesome thank you very much for thank you Wayne. thanks again thank this, you, this Wayne. was great yeah this was fun great <coughs> thanks again for joining us for another episode of art matters with wayne quackenbush Soon it will be time.